Good morning Tubes, back here in the backyard shop. Today's project is a 2015 Nissan Titan with a leaking radiator. This truck only has 100,000 kilometers. For Americans it's 60,000 miles. Not very old. And we got a radiator leak. First thing we're going to do is we're going to drain the coolant. To aid in draining the coolant we're going to remove the radiator caps, both of them. For the next thing, you need to climb underneath your truck to drain the coolant. I'm going to cheat a bit. I'm going to put the vehicle in the air. If your vehicle has a skid plate, we got to get this out of the way. There's uh, two 10 mil bolts here and here. We need to loosen them off. And then there's four Allen keys here. You can leave these bolts in here because the skid plate will slide backwards. That's a T8. There's my radiator leak. Looks like it's leaking around the fitting where the transmission cooler goes in. 19 mil wrench. If you can't start it with your fingers. That's gonna take a while to drain. Our coolant's finished draining. I'll put the plug back in. For our next step, we're going to take the clamps off our transmission warmer hoses, slide them back. One right here. We're going to take the clamp off our lower radiator hose. Going to slide our hoses off, the little radiator hose. Still some residual coolant falling right in the camera on my face. Transmission cooler hose, we're going to take it off the radiator. Give her a wiggle as you're pulling. Lots of corrosion on this hose. We're gonna have some leakage here. We have the transmission cooler line, it's disconnected. You can see we have quite a bit of fluid flowing out. I'm just gonna block that off the bolt so it's not dripping on my head. Our second transmission cooler line here. bolt just kind of stick it in there just gonna unclip the transmission cooler line from the side of the fan shroud put it off to the side for our next step we're gonna remove the lower fan shroud just push up on the tabs here Pop it in, go along. There's one here, it's released already. One here, push it up in, and boom. The lower fran shroud is removed. You want to hold it? Okay, take our upper rad hose off. Slide the clamp back. Give the hose a squeeze, it's broke free. Give it a slide off. Just kind of fold that out of our way. Looks like our intake snorkel tube here is going to be in our way to remove our rad shroud. 
So I'm going to take this off. You might be able to squeeze a rad shroud out without removing this. I think it's going to make my life a lot easier. To remove this, we're going to remove the uh, engine appearance cover. 10 mils here, one there, and it looks like we have a gear clamp right here to remove. Gear clamp, gear clamp. Eight mil on the gear clamp. We're just gonna set that aside. Put our upper radiator hose back out of the way again. No, we should probably take our overflow line off. Excuse my head. The overflow line is attached to the fan shroud down here. You can't see it. I'm just going to pop it off. There's also uh, a second uh, hose that's connected to the reservoir tank here, connected to the fan shroud. I'm just going to pull it off down here. It pulls straight off, it's pretty straightforward. Eight mil bolts on the fan shroud. There's two of them at the top, we're going to take those out. Looks like now we're going to remove uh, two 8 mil bolts here at the top and our radiator should tip back a bit and come out. Hopefully our fan does not interfere. If that's the case we'll have to take our fan off. Strange looking bolts. Looks like we have to disconnect our AC condenser. There's two bolts hidden underneath this area here and over here. They're 8 mil bolts. I'm going to take them off and try not to drop them down in Davy Jones's locker. It would have been super cool Nissan if you made it so this top piece came off. Now that we have the condenser unbolted from the radiator, you can push it back and you can see our fan hits the radiator and we have not cleared this top panel here. So I'm going to take the fan off and give us some more space to side this out. It looks like we have four 10 mil bolts that need to come off and then uh, we'll see if the belt comes off with it. Here's our fan bolts, 10 mil. Excuse my hands, I'm going to use a screwdriver to hold the pulley while I use my wrench to loosen them. I'm wedging the screwdriver between the pulley and the bolts. While I was doing this I could hear the AC condenser brackets fall down somewhere in behind here.
Here comes the fan. We have a lot more room to uh, force our radiator forward. With the radiator forward, we can see the uh, eight mil fasteners that hold our transmission cooler to the front of the radiator. Looks like we gotta take that off and that transmission cooler looks like it slides up away from the radiator at the bottom. That's the line that goes to the transmission warmer on the bottom. Now I think this should slide out. Looks like our AC condenser is actually hooked into the radiator down the, at the lower part here. I just gotta pull the AC condenser behind here up and out of the radiator support. Gunk on it. Yeah. A whole lot of leaves and dead birds and stuff. This is really challenging. Super challenging. Here we have our new radiator. It's a Spectra Premium. Not a sponsor. We're going to try to slide the new radiator in here. I have a, a wonderful helper here holding the transmission cooler and the AC condenser out of the way. It's super challenging to uh, get this to slide in here. Be careful that you don't damage anything. Just gonna slide the transmission cooler onto the lower radiator support. I got in the mounts at the bottom. I'm gonna put my eight mil bolts back in. Eight mil bolts. A little bit of a juggling dance to get all this in here. I'm putting anti-seize on my bolts because we live in the rust belt where we use salt on our roads and everything corrodes like crazy. Hopefully this premium spectra radiator lasts longer than the OEM. Five years on a factory radiator with 100,000 kilometers is not good in my book. You hear that? Click. Click. Torque to specification T. Tight. Now for my next trick. I have to try to slide that AC condenser into the lower mounts on the radiator. As I'm sitting here struggling to get this radiator in and the AC condenser on it, I look at the top and I realize I forgot to switch the speed nuts from the old factory radiator onto this uh, new radiator. So I'll do that now before I have it all assembled and realize that these are missing. One of the AC condenser Mount brackets has fallen between the radiator and the condenser. Fortunately, I have a helper and a magnet close by. I think I might have, have it in there. That's okay. Now you can't see your little mount holes for your radiator to know if they're in there or not. We've got the radiator in the lower support at the bottom. The uh, AC condenser is uh, in the holes in the bottom of the radiator. 
and our transmission cooler is bolted in. For our next step is we have to bolt on our, uh, our brackets on our AC condenser. And we gotta do it through this little tiny hole here. Could have put a little bit of lube on my rubber to help it go in. Bracket for the right side. Now we can kind of push the radiator up where it needs to be. And through the front slots here, we can put those 8 mil bolts back in to hold the condenser onto the radiator. A little uh, anisees on our bolts because salt. One started. This one's a little more challenging. That's right. I gotta put this another wrench. Success! Our AC condenser is bolted to our radiator and this flimsy piece of plastic is still in there. Radiator mount bolts. Then I rewrote my transmission cooler hose back down to the bottom. Gonna put our fan back in ever so carefully so we don't damage our new to me radiator. We got our fan all tightened up. I did two bolts from the top, two bolts from the bottom. Now we're ready to put our uh, fan shroud back in. Got our fan shroud here. Remember the cutout towards the bottom. We're gonna slide in there very gingerly so we don't destroy our new radiator. Putting the hose back in the radiator here, we have our two 8mm fan shroud bolts, anti-seize, radiator hose back on. Put our clamp back on. We can put our air tube back on. Tighten our clamps back up. And our engine appearance cover. Just give it a little bit of loop on the grommets there so it slides back in nicer. Ten mil bolts. Now we're underneath the car. We are gonna put our lower rad shroud back together. Make sure your ends here slide up into the top upper portion of the cover. Push it forward to clip it in. Make sure it's secure at the top, it slid in properly. And in my case it did. Over here, we're going to put our transmission cooler line back on. I'm going to take my blocking bolt out. And slide it onto our new transmission warmer, cooler, 
whatever you want to call it. We're going to put our line, clip it back into our rad shroud right here. This one goes to our transmission cooler. Put our clamp back on. We're going to put our other cooler line back on up here. I got this bolt stopping this from dripping on my head when I'm underneath the car. Ugh. Got that in there. Gonna clip it back on the lower rad shroud there. Put our clamp back on. Like that. We got our lower radiator hose right here. We'll slide that back on. Put our clamp back on. If your clamp is rotten and poor shape, make sure you replace it. This clamp looks a lot worse than it really is. Could have put our skin plate back on. I'm gonna try starting this first. And it works. Now that we have everything buttoned up underneath, we're gonna have to go ahead and, and fill this. So I'm looking over here. Looks like I forgot a hose. This will be our overflow line. Put this back in. Clamp it back onto our fan shroud. Put our clamp back on. I have my vacuum bleeder here. I'm going to use this. It's full of my uh, genuine Nissan coolant here. I'm going to use that to fill it. In order to use that, I have to block off the overflow so it doesn't lose my vacuum to my overflow tank. So let's give that a little pinch. My vice grips. Open this up. Slide it in. I put my cap back on here to seal the system up. Now the vehicle's uh, got almost uh, 30 inches of vacuum on it. Couldn't open the valve up. It's gonna take the coolant in from the bucket. As you can see here, it actually sucks the rad hoses right closed. Don't forget to put your radiator back on. The new radiator did not come with a rad cap, but there's nothing wrong with my factory cap and it fits on this aftermarket radiator just perfectly. Now to start her up, make sure you turn your heat on full. You want full coolant circulation through your heater core to make sure you get all the air bubbles out. And that should be it. That's putting a, a radiator in a Nissan Titan that's way too new.
There's my leak. The transmission cooler meets up with the lower tank. There's a seal in there. I got lots of corrosion.